Oh, hello. So good to see you again. Always a pleasure to have your company. Welcome back to the Gallery of Curiosities. I remain, as always, your humble host, Osgood. Business first. Submissions are now closed. So, please, stop sending your manuscripts. They continue to trickle in. Stop it. Stop it. I will tell you when we are reading again. We have replied to everything which was received, so if you did not get your letter, do get in touch and Kevin will resolve that for you. Since we are on the topic of writing, I thought I would do something a little... Hmm, meta for this evening's exhibit. It comes to us from author M. Reagan, who has been writing for over a decade with credits ranging from localization work to short stories to podcast scripts. Their soulful debut novella, 21 Grams, can be found on Timber Ghost Press's website as well as the usual large online retailer, and they can be found on Twitter and Facebook at M. Reagan Fiction. It'll be read for us by Mr. Chris Law. Hit the Bottle by M. Reagan. At first, she thinks it is a mole. Look! Mary exclaims, and you can't really blame her for her enthusiasm. She's never had a defining feature before. Not really. Your own descriptions of her usually begin and end with mentions of curves in all the right places. And what girl doesn't have those? This, though, this is distinguishing. Mary's pretty, symmetrical face now boasts an unpretty, asymmetrical mark directly beneath her left eye. And, you have to admit, something about it draws your attention in ways that her curves don't. What is it exactly? How round it is? How black? How fuzzy? Leaning over the largest dent in your desk, Mary points, grinning proudly. You watch as the blotch pulses at the end of a manicured finger. Or maybe it doesn't pulse. Maybe it squiggles? Stretches? Well, what do you think? Did it just grow? A queasy sensation bubbles below your belly. You wonder if you might be able to see through the spot somehow. If only you stared long enough. It's not a thought you want to have. You blink, turning away. I think I need another coffee, Mary. Sometimes you regret leaving the force. Not for reasons of politics or anything. You don't miss the honor of the badge either. And it's not like you've developed any patriotic sentiment since quitting. But that steady paycheck. Oh, that sweet, steady paycheck. Imagine being able to afford good food again. Top quality cigarettes. An actual apartment. Or even just an office in a decent part of town. Some place swanky. Some place new. Some place that doesn't have a dysfunctional pair of bozos boarding in the room above, who always seem to wait until midnight to start screaming at each other. Irritated, you pour yourself a finger of scotch, knocking bottle and glass together as loudly as you can. Here's to us, you toast the ceiling, then wait for the liquor to kick in. It's not an investigation. Obviously not. She's your secretary. She didn't hire you, and it's not like anyone else will hire you on her behalf. 
As far as you're aware, Mary has no friends. No family. No one she's mentioned anyway. But by virtue of being a detective, you can't help wondering. You can't help wanting to know. So, tell me, you say the next day, feet on your desk and fedora angled across your brow. What did a dame like you do before coming to work for a guy like me? The question is Mary glancing up from her typewriter. One of her eyes, expertly lined in coal, is wide with surprise. The other is void, having been consumed by the fist-sized pocket of nullidity that is working to invert her face. As she contemplates her answer, the hole's tenebrous boundaries give a faint thrum like the static that halos an electric light. You struggle to comprehend the existential concept of nothingness and feel your brain buckle wetly in your skull. Huh, Mary realizes, soft. The exhalation fluffs her perfect bangs. I don't remember. Don't remember? Is she an amnesiac? A dumb Dora? Scowling, you tilt forward and press. You don't remember anything? Not a thing. Your secretary grins, unbothered by her own lack of history. The expression mutilates her features nearly beyond recognition. Her upper lip smeared by the vortexing nihility that eats at her cheek, and you have to close your eyes behind your hat to keep from vomiting. How could Mary stand to look at herself in the mirror that morning? How had she made it down the street without causing a riot? There is something so horrifically wrong about this transformation of hers. Unfortunately, crimes against nature are outside your jurisdiction. You clear your throat. <clears throat> In that case, what's your earliest memory? Hmm, let's see. Mary muses, twirling a corkscrew curl. A silvery shaft of light cuts cleanly across the coil, bleaching half to blondness. Shadows dye the lower whorl brunette. Furthest back I can recall is, well, I suppose it's the first time you asked me to get you a coffee. Right before that big case. No cream, no sugar, you said, and then that beautiful widow walked in. How about you? Beneath the rim of your fedora, your clammy forehead furrows. What? You got a history? Mary clarifies, poking again at her keys. Click, click. Like rodents across hardwood. Letter stamps chitter in the spaces between breaths, and to you, they sound alive. Since we're sharing, I mean, I'm sure you do. All private dicks have a history, yeah? Yeah, you say carefully, considering, then confirming. Yeah, I do, you say again, more emphatically. Because she's right. Because it's true. You have a ma, a pa, a childhood back east. There was your time as an officer, of course, and then someone died. Your brother? No. Lover? Wait. Wife? Wife. Wife? You're certain for a second, but when that second passes, you realize you were right the first time. You... you have a murder brother. Probably. Never mind. It's natural for a few details to get lost as the years go by. Isn't it? Besides, a past forgotten is a past that can't harm you. It's 3 a.m., and the saps above you have decided to engage in a no-holds-barred shouting match. Patched mold and a thick layer of asbestos separates you from their row, but you can still make out the occasional BORING and BANAL and NOT EVEN WORTH MY TIME, YOU COMPLETE HACK. Plenty of profanity, too. Can't have a good brawl without some nasty language. Mm-hmm. Right back at you, you grumble after a particularly colorful curse, taking a hearty swig straight from your bottle. 
tipsy though you are, you still got faculties enough to brace for the burn. Except, when the liquid hits your tongue, it has no heat. Not even a spark. Just a fizzle. Huh. This must be a new low for drunks the world over. You could have sworn it was scotch in your hands. How the hell did you end up with a mouthful of champagne? Idiot! Booms one of the voices, feminine and raw. Completely asinine! I said I need to see real change! You hear me? Stop dragging your feet on this. There are plenty of others out there who'd love to have me. Do you want me to leave for good? On behalf of the woman's taciturn husband, you mutter, Yes, yes I do. Now Mary, you're not the investigator here, and we both know that I didn't hire you for your smarts, you say. Palms up, chin up, acid clawing at your esophageal passageway on stinging centipedal claws. But even you must realize by now that that's not a mole. Mary retorts, her head a concave abyss of perpetually helixing non-existence. You can't even say for sure that she's opened her mouth, for her entire body is a single, soundless, logarithmic spiral. Curves in all the wrong places, you think madly, struggling to keep from staring at the hazy, throbbing contours of her collapser core. She is imploding, slowly, swiftly. It is a metamorphosis that threatens to warp you in kind, to leave you distorted by the gravitational pull of change. Click, 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 click. Tight bars flex like legs, like fingers, like something running wild. Paper ribbons free of its holders, neon white, blank, clean. You shut your eyes, but that doesn't stop the dark. You cover your ears, but that doesn't stop the noise. The not noise. The hollering, howling hush of encroaching oblivion. Don't take this the wrong way! You shout, back pressed to damp glass and trench coat whipping around your knees. You're a nice broad and all, but I think I may need to sack you mi- Then you pause. You frown. What are you doing? A dame? No. A widow? Wait, a lover? A wife? Maybe a brother? One way or another, I've got a case to crack, you remind yourself, scoffing at whatever foolishness had compelled you to take cover behind your desk. Possibly a bottle of smoky, well-aged foolishness. Probably of the cognac variety. That seems to be what the evidence around your feet suggests. They're all empty. Really should look into getting a secretary of some kind. You grumble to yourself, kicking away the worst of the mess. Someone to class up a joint like this. The hollow echo of rolling glass does something strange to your bowels. You tell yourself that it's a hangover talking. You're not sure what the final straw is, but suddenly it is on your back and trying to break it, just like you're trying to break the ceiling. Shut up! You shout at that stupid couple, punctuating the demand with the handle of a broom. Shut up! Shut up! Some of us need to sleep! Not good enough! The wife snaps, heedless of your yowling. Such a waste. I'm not convinced you had any talent to begin with. So if you want this thing to happen, you do as I say. It's him or me. That's it. Molars grinding, muscles tensing, you chuck the broom to the side and gather up your keys. They chatter in your fist. Click, 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 click. As you storm through your tiny office apartment, tripping over discarded bourbon on your way to the door. Out the door. Into the hallway. The reverberation of your footsteps reminds you of bottles, bottles, rolling bottles. And you're going to be sick. You know you are. But with God as your witness, you will up chuck on that damn couple's doorstep and nowhere else. First, though, you have to find the stairs. Oh, you think you know so much better. This place has to have stairs. No, the agency thinks I know so much better and they're right. 
Every multi-level building complex needs to have stairs. Bitch! Where the hell are the stairs? One last chance, growls a woman that you just can't seem to find. It's time to kill your darlings, darling. Him or me? High above your head, somewhere beyond layers of mold and asbestos, comes a sound like rodents skittering across hardwood. At first, you think it is a mole. <laughs> Kill your darling. Indeed. You know, we received 917 manuscripts, and 903 of those darlings were... Oh, killed is such a harsh word. They were... They were... Sent on their way. Fantasy is quite a broad genre, and most of what was sent in was simply... Not in our wheelhouse. That does not mean we did not like reading them. No, 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 no. Many of those were quite good, and we do expect that they will find good homes someday. As for the 14 stories which were selected, I look forward to presenting those exhibits over the course of the next year. We still have some which have not yet been accepted by voice actors. So, if you might be interested in performing for us, do send your demo reel to curiousgallery at gmail.com. This evening's reader was Chris Law. He lives in Toronto with his partner and two cats which openly defy his authority. Ah, there's a delightful chill in the air this evening. Spooky season is near. I'm sure that you have much to do to get ready, as do I. Do take care and come visit us again next time at the Gallery of Curiosities. Gallery of Curiosities is produced under a Creative Commons International 4.0 non-commercial attribution no derivatives license. Story copyrights remain with the authors. Our theme song is Ashes Ashes by Deus Ex Vapora Machina. If you like the show, give us some stars and reviews on iTunes or your favorite podcatcher. This episode was produced in October of 2023. For full show notes, visit us online at gallerycurious.com. No Easter egg.